uh, the use of EEG has really changed in the recent years because until now it was used mostly for, uh, through visual inspection by physicians. So the physician just view the EEG which is performed in the, in the lab and it, uh, by visual analysis of the waves and of the, uh, EG can use it for, uh, mostly di a diagnosis for mostly for, uh, in order to get a hint about the, uh, presence or not of, for example, epilepsy or for other reasons, for example, in, in the case of patient with the, with the coma or patient in other condition of en encephalopathy. Um, but the analysis is just guided by the individual experience of the reader. It is not an objective, um, an objective method. This it is quite semi-quantitative because there are some criteria in order to classify the uh, abnormality in an EG, in an EG recording, but uh, the inter-rate agreement is quite uh, uh, wide, especially among people, physicians with a uh, large amount of experience, with a lot of years of experience, experience in neurophysiologists, and for example, resident or medical student or um, young physician that are just starting to get uh, experience with uh, DG interpretation. So, um, now we are reaching a level that we have a computer machine and quantitative gene analysis that can help physician in uh, um, suggesting uh, diagnosis, but also in guiding the prognosis. The first uh, thing that I said, so suggesting diagnosis is something that has been exploited, for example, using uh, always machine learning, uh, or even in this case, machine learning algorithms, for example, in the detection of spikes in terrestrial abnormalities. So, uh, for example, if we have patient with a very long recording that could last days or even weeks, uh, it would be uh, very time consuming for the physician to just review all the recording in order to search for interictal normality or spike. We have now a uh, computer algorithm that can do it uh, uh, in our place. So they can identify interictal ability for discharge or spikes, and they can quantify the uh, burden of epileptic discharge in a specific patient. So it can be really useful. They can also uh, identify um, the uh, starting of a seizure in, the, the, in uh, some clinical settings. For example, during continuous EG monitoring, there are some techniques that can uh, alert the physician when they, um, there is a warning of uh, the initiation of a seizure, for example. So the physician is not obliged to stay uh, 24 hours uh, looking to the G, which is not feasible and possible, of course. Um, so that's one of the, the more, one of the exciting uh, uh, future uh, possibilities of this algorithm is uh, in the diagnostic field. Uh, regarding the uh, prognostic field, we have even more possibility because um, in order to until now, the EG has not been uh, used for prognostic uh, information because, of course, the treatment is not based on the EG, but it's based on the clinical feature of the patient. So, uh, as we said, as among phys physicians, we said we are not treating with anti-seizure medication the EG, but we are treating the patient. So, if the EG has... Uh, for example, a lot of interictal discharges, but the patient's seizure free, it is quite debatable if we uh, are um, forced or obliged to uh, intensify the treatment because we are not treating really the abnormalities. There are some exceptions, uh, some exception to this rule. For example, there are some condi conditions like uh, the uh, status epilepticus, continuous status epilepticus during sleep, so the Penelope syndrome, for example, as was described by Tassinari, which is uh, completely different because in this case, we have a continuous spike wave uh, abnormalities during sleep, and these abnormalities are responsible by themselves for the cognitive decline of children with this condition. So in this case, we are treating, in effect, DG in order to, um, to cure these abnormalities and to uh, let the child, the, the child have his normal uh, development, cognitive development. So, uh, mm, but this is a really uh, special case. Uh, usually, we do not use EG for prognostic information. Instead, using quantitative EG analysis and machine learning algorithm, our aim now is to get prognostic information that could, that could help physicians in deciding. Uh, also, for example, in drug refractory epilepsy cases, for example, if we have 
have a patient that is not suitable for epilepsy surgery, which I remember is the most uh, important treatment for patients with drug refractory epilepsy because it's the only one that can uh, grant seizure freedom. But if we have a patient that for, that for various region, region, uh, reasons cannot underwent a surgery, surgical evaluation, we can have prognostic information for other uh, palliative techniques such as vagus nerve stimulation or other neurostimulation technique that, as we know, uh, have uh, a low rate of success. And we cannot uh, know before the implantation, which is an invasive procedure, which of our patient will be, will be a responder. And uh, if we could know uh, before the implantation, which is the more suitable uh, case for the implantation of an invasive stimulation, such as vagus nerve stimulation or DBS, or responsive nerve stimulation, which has various techniques that can be used in these cases, that will be a great success for the development of prognostic technique. Of course, there are other applications, but I think these are the most exciting uh, ways that, that we can exploit the quantitative edge analysis and machine learning for aging.